Previously on Near Gestalt. Ah, I'm getting it. I'm ruining the ceremony. Ah, fear, I'm having so much fun. Look how excited I am. Yeah. And now back to Yoko Taro's crazy brain. Hello! Sneako B. Back with some more Near Gestalt. We last left off, we completed ending B, and now before I do anything else, I want to see if I can beat this fucking DLC. I just reached the point where I keep dying, and I'm hoping to God it doesn't happen again. Please, just let me beat this stupid shit. Those things will kill me like in a single fucking hit. Don't, fuck. Oh my God, why does it have to do so much damage? I don't think I can hit him from here. Oh my God, why? Just keep shooting. Take it careful. There. Any more? Any more? I feel like he had. A I knew it was the last one. <laughs> oh, 10,000 experience points. Cool. Thanks. 50,000 gold. Okay. Now what? What? So is this it? Huh? This is the final ent entry of the diary. Yeah, that's it. Interesting. Figure out anything? I fear not. Didn't think you would. What? No. Nothing? That's it? No big imp reveal or ending or anything? Oh, what the fuck? I didn't even get like another even blurb of dialogue. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Fuck you. <laughs> That's bullshit. Well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> I guess. At least I can say I beat it, I suppose. But still, fuck you. We last left off a completed ending B. And, uh, yes, to, to, to my question from last episode, did I have to play through the game again to get to uh, ending C? The answer was fuck. Yes, damn it. God damn it. Why? This is so unnecessary. To make you have to go through the entire game again, and there isn't anything different about it. There wasn't additional, like, dialogue or new scenes or anything. It was just, it just makes you play through the whole game again. And I couldn't load up an old save after beating ending B or something. There was no way I could do that. I, ha I had to use the save that I had, and it immediately restarts me at the beginning of the game. It was just, it just seems so unnecessary. They could have easily just, just had me like continue right before the Shadow Lord's castle in that case. Cause there aren't any save points once you actually uh, get to the, past the point of no return. So there's no way you could accidentally like lock yourself out of getting all the, the weapons or whatever so you could get ending C. It just seemed uh, so needless. I don't, I don't know why they designed it this way. But that's, I don't know, I guess that's sort of this game in a nutshell. There's, there are a lot of good ideas, but there's also quite a few bad ideas and bad executions. And this is definitely, I think, one of them. You know, a second playthrough with the additional stuff, I, I understand. Automata did, and I thought that was, it was an interesting uh, way to give another side of the story. But a third playthrough with nothing new was just unnecessary. But anyway, you guys clarified some things for me. Uh, first and most importantly, uh, yes, in fact, it is, was suggesting that uh, Kane is, she is a hermaphrodite. You guys sort of elaborated, apparently the tree that's in the, the forest village uh, is responsible for creating the replicants. And due to an error, uh, with Kainé's and create a female but with male genitalia and apparently it's also supposed to be canon that she has an abnormally large penis like like seriously like like I feel like that shit was just like written in there like I you know what I bet if I put this in there they're gonna make some really kinky fucking hentai out of it I, I just know it because other like seriously what other point could that be for having that including that detail in there but yes add another uh, tally to Nico's uh, inability to notice penis when it's right there in front of him god Damn. Apparently, you can actually, you guys said you can actually see, if, you lo if you're looking, I guess, you can actually see that uh, Kane has a bit of a bulge. <laughs> really? Fuck. <laughs> I honestly didn't notice that, but I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. But yes, and that's also a, the reason why she wears these ridiculous, this ridiculous uh, outfit is because she wants to accentuate her feminine parts. So I guess try to take focus away from the uh, one masculine part of her. <laughs> You know what? I don't give a fuck though, right? She's still hot as shit, and I would still tap that. Or maybe in in this case, she, she might be the one tapping me. So apparently, the reason that all the villagers were freaked out about uh, Kane was the, the fact that she had a penis, which I, I, 
it, it just seems so weird to me. Like, the fact that they were scared of her because of it. I don't know. I'm sure uh, any hermaphrodites out there would probably have a better understanding of that than I would. Uh, I feel so bad for her, though. So that means that, you know, normally she really is a female, but then she's been put into this body that had an error on it. But yes, anyway, we have only two endings remaining, and in C and D. And, uh, I, uh, yes, I've already played through the game again. I just have to go to the, uh, Lost Shrine and kick ass and then beat the Shadow Lord. And apparently it'll just continue right from there. Oh, leaving, yep, leaving forever. Fuck all of you. You guys did nothing for me. And I did everything for you. All of your dumb, stupid side quests. Well, or at least, what, what I get to? 91%, that's good enough. So yeah, you guys told me that apparently at the end of this, uh, you were given a choice, and one will give you ending C, and the other will give you ending D. Um, so what I should do, basically, is, uh, is pick one choice, uh, get that ending, reload the game, and then, uh, get ending D. Other <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have to, I would actually have to play through it all again, which, fuck that shit, seriously. Alright, three is enough. But it really was a... a big mistake for them to do it this way, I feel like, because just like, because it really does start to just wear on your patience, and, and suddenly the, uh, what was mediocre gameplay really starts to sort of grind on you a bit, you know, and just like all the really annoying bits of pushing the blocks and just traversing around, like even for like a game that had like a, would have amazing gameplay, going through it a third time would be, would be quite a bit to expect a player to do. You know, I still don't understand why these things bleed. They're supposed to be the souls of humans, right? Like, but why would they bleed? I don't know, I kind of expect it to be like ghosts or something. Again, I suppose, I suppose souls themselves are a pretty abstract concept to begin with, so. <laughs> but you can make it whatever, make souls whatever the hell you want to be, right? I could make it a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if that's what I wanted. A world full of PB and J's. I pay sixty dollars for that. You know, I still don't really get how the king manages to kill it, but I can't kill it like even after killing it technically twenty freaking times in a row. I'm even using the same dumb weapon you guys are. What the hell's your secret, huh? Stupid asshole boar can't even get up anymore. I'm killing him so fucking fast. He's like, oh, 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 oh dead again. Uh. Can I see a bulge? Uh... I guess. I, I don't know. I don't really see a bulge, though. <laughs> Where's your monster jet? Come on, show me! Show me! I don't know. I'm almost wondering again if maybe that was something they, like, lessened in the uh, uh, Western release. I mean, honestly, I really don't see anything. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But I don't like it. <laughs> oh my god. He's just lying there. Ah, ah. <laughs> die, damn it. Ah. Come on. Die, you prick. Why am I not cutting you? You think I'm gonna give a shit that I'm fucking humanity right now? You better. You bet your ass I'm not. Oh, here we go. Well, ain't that precious. I'm happy for him. You know, Sunshine, that black scrawl has almost completely taken you over. <sighs> yeah, I know. But goddamn, we had fun, huh? Killing and killing and more killing. What a rush! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! No! No, no, no! It wasn't fun at all! I turned you into a killing machine! I spread evil and chaos around the world! But it all feels so empty now! Why? I don't understand! You guys said apparently Tyran was voiced by, uh, Atsuro, voice actor from Devil Survivor. Atsu Bro! No! Sorry, Sunshine. Maybe I'm just nicer than you thought. Stop! Don't treat me this way! I hate it when people are nice to me! Oh no. I was afraid this would happen. I'm gonna swallow you up, Sunshine! I'm gonna swallow you whole! Nope, just gonna stay here and proceed to look out this window with my daughter. <laughs> and pretend I didn't totally fuck everything and everyone. Also, apparently, I think you guys said the replicants just die out because when the shades are gone, uh, the replicants will, uh, 
relapse or something, they'll 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 pass away as well. So, meaning I'm gonna probably die sometime soon too. Kinda. What is it? Listen to me. The shade inside me is growing, and I can't stop it. Soon, real soon, I'm gonna go berserk. I can't hold it back anymore. Kaine, you have to fight. You have to- Just shut up and listen to me. <laughs> Emil is gone, all right? So there's no way anyone can stop me. God damn it, Kane! Tyrant, I don't want to hurt my friends. Well, hell, sunshine! It's not like I can stop it. When gestalts go out of control, they lose their minds. Hmm. Your memory and mine will be completely overridden. <sighs> Kane! Run! Run! Running away. Oh fuck. God damn it. There has to be a way. No, I won't do that. Holy shit. Ah, oh, fuck. We didn't come here to watch each other die. You taught me something, Clanny. You taught me that a man must be strong to protect those he loves. Believe in me, Kaine. I'm going to save you! I swear it! Ah. Well, there might be one way to save her. Who said that? It don't matter, so don't ask. Just shut up and listen. Ah, how'd you get in my what? head? Are you... I said, listen! There's a way to save Kaine's life, all right? But you're gonna have to make a difficult decision. I'll do whatever it takes. When the time comes, I'm going to pin Kaine down. And as soon as I do, you need to stab her in the heart. No, I can't! Fine. Don't believe me. Stand around with your thumb up your ass and watch her die a terrible death. You want me to believe you? Oh. Ow, fuck, ow. Okay, can I fight her now? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Kane. Fuck. Oh. Very nice. Now, if you want to save your precious Kane. There are two ways to do it. One is to plunge your sword into her chest. That's what she wants after all. Freedom from burdens. Freedom from life. What's the other way? The other way is to make her a normal human being again. But to make that happen, 
You gotta trade your own existence for hers. Oh. Well, there you go. Good luck with that. Yeah. You're the shade inside Kaine. Why are you trying to help her? Probably for the same reason you are. She's our little now bunny. Talk. Make your choice. And Kaine's life and free from from burden. Sacrifice your own existence to make Kaine human again. Well, all right, let's do the uh, let's do the fucking shit one first. Sorry, Kaine, I still love you though. Kaine. I was going for the kiss. Oh. Kaine. Let's go home. Can you hear me? <gasps> I spent years inside Kaine's body, tormenting her from within. I felt her pain, her emotions, as if they were my own. And there was so much pain. So when I say she's free now, I want you to believe me. Thanks to you, Kaine has been forgiven and saved. Oh, wait. She had a final message for you. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Kaine. Oh. We'll always be together. Sides. I, I did hear you guys say uh, another, that was another thing that sort of worked better with the uh, younger Nier uh, was that sort of romance apparently between him and Kane. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. I wasn't really entirely sure with uh, with older Nier here if that was what was going on, but I guess it was. But yeah, I would definitely agree. I think the younger one probably. I mean, not that you know. This isn't all right, but you guys apparently said and I, I didn't realize this, but before the the flash forward in time, she was originally seventeen years old. Seventeen, Jesus! Unless she was like in her late twenties, she she seemed like a fully grown adult. So that means at uh, by this point in the game, she's she's twenty two, I suppose. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Now for the other one. Okay. Oh, the strongest bond. I've got an achievement for. I've noticed there are actually trophies uh, for killing the bosses like in a certain amount of time. All right. This is. I'm, I'm betting this is the true ending. Sacrifice your own existence to make Hana human again. Daddy, you're gonna save you, girl. You will disappear from this world. Your daughter. Your friends. Everyone will forget you. Oh, Jesus. You and any sign that you ever existed will be erased. And in exchange, Kaine will return to her mortal life. I see. It, that would sort of explain why... Uh... Oh, God. This shit again. Oh, my God. But that explains why Meal never really brings up me and uh and near Tabata. I was kind of wondering about that. I was like, he brings up Kaine. Well, 
in the when he's when you're fighting the final boss. I get that he forgot most of his memories, but even then, you think he would have mentioned me since I was supposed to be a cherished friend of his, but he didn't. And I'm guessing that's probably why, because. I choose to do this and erase my existence, and he forgot about me. It's kind of like Chain of Memories, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God, though. If you choose this option, all your saved data will be erased. Are you sure about this? Oh, my God. All over again. It's fine. You know what? I'm, I'm good. I think I've, I've done everything I, I want to do at this point. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to probably want to play any more of this game. It was fun, but fine. Do it. Take my life. Even if you elect against it this time, you can always return to this selection by clearing the game again. Are you sure? Are you still sure about this? Uh, yes, do it. <laughs> All near safe. <laughs> well, it's actually probably a good thing they did this in case you accidentally hit yes the first time. All near safe data on the same user account will be erased. So you can only choose this option once. Are you really sure about this? <laughs> this is your last chance to change your mind. Are you really, really sure about this? You better give me something good though. All right, give me a freaking ending that will of all endings. It just, it just says end. Enter the name of the player to be erased. Oh, really? Okay. Nico Bizzo the Dinosizzle. Dead! The correct name was entered. All save files will be erased. <laughs> oh, now it's gonna dramatically show it. Yep. Hey, look at all these cool things you used to have. Oh, dead. All gone forever. All those quests you spent, all those useless quests you spent hours doing, gone. All those amazing weapons, actually, what what amazing weapon? And like about a 99 useless ones. No, not my fish. No. Oh, oh, oh. oh my tutorials. No, no. <laughs> Ah, uh, no! I didn't finish reading that wedding invitation. No! Ah, uh, words, uh... <laughs> uh, I love they make a show of it just like they did before. Uh... It's like it never even fucking happened. Kill this key, dead. 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 Deleting memory one. Delete it. Ah, uh, dead. <laughs> Oh damn, it seems multiple save files won't save me from this. No! And then it just says end. <laughs> it doesn't actually give me anything. <laughs> Fuck! Ah! Oh, now she's not even gonna realize I saved her. Are you all right, Yona? And Yona forgot all about are you, me. Are you the one who helped me? <laughs> I guess. Thank you. I'm glad you're okay. What's wrong? I mean, you defeated the Shadow Lord and everything, but you you don't look happy. Didn't you have a dad? Did I? I don't. Oh. Oh, a lunar tear. How pretty. <laughs> Are you crying? Um, yeah. I guess I am.
It's like I just found something special. Something very special. You know, it's actually a little different than uh, the Automatus 2 when they had you delete it, because apparently in, in that game, and I, and I got the gist that it, it was it was optional. You really didn't have to delete your saved data to see this see the ending. But this one, it looks like you you, you did. <laughs> if you chose not to, then you would, I'm guessing, get the other ending. Oh, that was sad though. But I guess I don't know. At least Kane managed to live. I I love Daddy Near, but you know, I f I feel like in the end, I've after truly kind of fucking humanity and screwing the rest of civilization. You know, let's just, let's save Kaede. Like, we need like one good thing in this game before I fucking fade into nothing. I wonder, did Yoko Tar do, does, it, does he do that in all of his games? Did Drakengard have the exact same thing that you could like, they had to delete your saves or something? Your playthrough must end in pain. <laughs> you go through pain, you end in pain. Your life pain now. Thanks, Yoko Taro. Oh, something very special. What, you tell me the delete wasn't completed yet? Oh, no! <laughs> You're telling me if I quit right there, I could have saved it! No! <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? Oh, it gave me a new title screen too, just like before. Now I see the one, one lunar tear bringing light to the... To the once dark title screen. Wait, are you sure it's gone? There is no safe data, stupid. No, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all right. I don't care. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that was near Gestalt. Oh man, that was that was definitely a serious roller coaster. Um, actually, you know what? Before I uh, give my thoughts on the game and, and stuff like that, there is actually, believe it or not, there is one more ending to this game. That's ending E. So apparently, uh, after the game was released, they were they uh, eventually released something called Grimoire Near, which is a a like a compilation of short stories that help to uh, elaborate on a number of points, uh, things that I, I think probably weren't covered in very great detail like the grimoires and one of those short stories is apparently ending e also first off grimoire near has actually never been officially translated into english so this is uh from a number of different translations apparently this this is from a summary from chinese forums and blogs this article needs work a proper tr translation of the novella is required so this i don't know maybe takes this translation with a grain of salt it might not be perfect this is called the lost world and i believe it's meant to be ending e of the game the end is near, the end of near. Uh, Kane continues to have nightmares after near disappears, with a feeling that she has lost something precious. Kane remembers saving a girl named Yona from the Shadow Lord's castle, and that the Shade Tyran is gone for unknown reasons. Every time she thinks back to that moment, there's always something flashing before her, but dissipating right away. Okay, so this is continuing right where we left off. Troubled by these nightmares, Kane decides to take her anger out in some shades by going to the Forest of Myth after hearing about the presence of shades there. As she arrives, she notices that the forest has become something entirely different. It no longer looks like a forest, but instead a fusion of forest and machines with power cables covering the ground like tree roots, and every step covered in slick green machine oil and sap. Kane ar arrives at the most eye-catching tree in the forest, and suddenly the cable-like vines form together in the shape of a young man. Hello, I... Before he can finish, Kane lops his head off, the body falls apart and reforms in another area. How violent. Allow me to introduce myself. I am... Random random code, it says in parentheses. The overseer of this forest. Random code? K Kane paused. The young man continues. You don't understand the, the language my name is in, so call me anything you like, whether it is the overseer or young man. You probably have a lot of things you don't understand right now. So what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, then it's set up like a choice like you're actually like playing the game. <laughs> one, about the forest. Two, about me. Three, about the future. Pick one. Before Kane can answer, the young man starts explaining. First, about the forest of myth. It is the, the terminal computer where the ancient people studied the demonic element in quantum physics. The area is entering its final stage, 
and the shutdown sequence has already begun. Oh, here we go. As the young man continues his explanation, swarms of P-33 robot or drones rush in and attack Kane. On to the second second point, the mysterious young man claims to be an existence similar to that of Grimoire Vice. He controls all the demonic elements, the life and death of all gestalts and replicants, and the information of everything within the area. A humanoid P-33 robot appears as Kane dispatches several P-33 drones. She remembers finding the robot in the junk heap alongside someone else. That's the most important person to you? If you can defeat these kids, I'll tell you why you are here. And the person that you cannot remember. The young man laughs as he summons a robot that looks exactly like Kane. The third point, the future. Like I said, the, this world is a failure. We don't need robots and humans, and I have lost my reason to exist. A meal with an extra pair of arms that accidentally formed when he was doing reconstruction of his body appears out of nowhere and joins Kane's battle against the android Kane. Emil notices that the tree is the source of everything, and the two concentrate their attack at the enemy's core. The scenery, the trees, the ground, the, and the human face dissolve into a giant puddle. Using the power of magic to fuse machine, machines, humans, and plants together, this is the truth behind this world. Amazing! Amazing! A replicant like you can reach this level! Amazing! The young man babbles on as he disappears. Power cables whip around in the wind as a storm brews. Emil protects Kane as she approaches the magical source. She continues to swing her sword in the overpowering white light. Suddenly, everything quiets down as though she has arrived at the border between reality and a dream world. Kane feels that something important is in front of her. She tries to touch it, touching it, and I can and can vaguely tell it is the shape of a person. It says, it's like, I nay, don't, like, bits and pieces. Tears flow down Kane's face. Go back. Do not come here. Don't. She grabs onto it as it slips away, losing something important again. This is pissing me off. This is my life. I decide how I live. I don't need anyone telling me what to do. It's my decision to die for you as your sword! Kane cries out of fear of losing that important thing, angry at how powerless she feels. I must, I must, I must get it back! I'll get it back to what matter what price I have to pay! Someone pushes Kane from the back, helping her move forward. Stop screwing around! How can you disappear all by yourself? I'm the one who'll decide what the meaning of my life is! I get to do whatever I want with my own life! Get back here, you fucking bastard! The white life dissipates and the clear blue sky re reappears. The forest of myth disappears, leaving behind a giant techno-organic flower. From afar, it resembles the lunar tear. At the stamen, Kaine holds a person that is important to her. This person that she used to see is kind and in a deep slumber. Emil floats closer. <laughs> is it Ventus? <laughs> Kaine looks up to the sky, thinking back to how someone helped push her forward within that white light. When she clearly heard, I'll leave the sky to you, lingerie woman, it's probably... It's gotta be me, hussy. They meet again. In a meal with a slightly different body, an older Kaine, and a younger version of him. Yes, his name is... And then it just ends. Huh. That was rather bizarre. But that's kind of in line with the game, isn't it? Yeah, I could tell that the translation wasn't the best either, probably. But yeah, there are a total of 10 short stories in this thing. Uh, some of them are kind of long, though. I, I don't really want to go reading through all of them. But I, I do remember you guys telling me that uh, apparently the, the purpose of the grimoires, which really wasn't established in the game, was that there were there's a failsafe. So if uh, Vice had combined with, with the Shadow Lords book, it would have apparently activated a, uh, a program that would have forced a combination of uh all the guest stults and the and the replicants the shadow lord would have fused with my body and so on and so forth everyone's guest stalt would have fused with their own replicant so sort of there's a fail safe but because i ended up at the beginning of the game i ended up smacking vice in the head and he forgot a bunch of stuff he, for, he forgot all about that so <laughs> and again inadvertently causing the end of everything man if they managed to activate it maybe we would have been saved maybe i, I don't know i still still seem like it, it wasn't a very foolproof plan to begin with but yes my final thoughts on the game um I, I enjoyed it for the most part I, I i definitely would say the the best parts of it were the story which doesn't surprise me at all i mean that's kind of when I, I went into this sort of aware of that you know based on reviews and what people uh had told me about this game um is you know the gameplay was not the best and i i, I gotta agree i mean it wasn't it wasn't really bad though either it was just sort of like really bare bones and kind of all over the place like it just seemed there were like mechanics in there it seemed like that weren't totally fleshed out things you could do in battle that you like never needed to do so it was like no point in them being there the magic and the weapons were all unbalanced as shit like seriously like 
like 95% of those weapons were freaking pointless. Out of the magic you had, probably the best ones were the Dark Blast, the Dark Lance, the Hand, and maybe Phantasm. But even then, I mean, I'd still think the the hand worked just fine for crowd control. It was just kind of there. Like, it was something to create some kind of gameplay, but it was just very, just, just dull. There just wasn't enough meat to it, and not enough to, to make it interesting or unique. But like I said, I'm not surprised by this. This is, I, I went into this expecting that. The other major fault of this game was the, is the freaking side quests. Oh man, those were, those were freaking bad. <laughs> I mean... The, the best parts of them were the, the banter between Vice and myself. And in that regard, they did a great job with that. They needed that. Even if we had, if they had like just the, the text boxes and not the voices, it wouldn't have been the same. Like they, they really needed those voices to help push that along. But even so, it, it, a lot of the psychos were just such a slog. Tons of fetch quests. And, and it, honestly, this was something that Automata ran into as well, but this was was taken to like a new level of like fucking bullshit especially especially the second half of the game when i we flash forward in time those side quests like like before they t maybe took up maybe half of them were like side quests and then in the second half of the game they were almost all side you know fetch quests those were easily the worst parts of the game but the best parts were fucking awesome all right the 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 characters in this game were wonderful absolutely delightful i i can see why this game did get such a cult following because the story is so good and so intriguing and uh the characters are so lovable that it's hard not to uh become invested in it, even with the you know rather mediocre gameplay the voice acting was top notch too they did a great job with that laura bailey um the guy that plays uh, Daddy in Persona 5, too, he, he did an awesome job. I, it was nice hearing him get a big major role. Emil, of course. I mean, everyone everyone sounded really great. Except maybe the NPCs, who were, but those were kind of more hilarious than anything. Kind of like Really Guy. Really? The music was fucking awesome, and again, not surprising at all. I mean, it was the same composer that did Nier Automata, and it was the same level of just, ooh, Really, really gets you right in the feels, you know, especially during those some of those uh, emotional scenes. And the story was really good. I do kind of wish that more was sort of elaborated in the game as opposed to this supplementary material, which is supposed to, you know, explain a bit more about some of these specifics. And I, I do also kind of wish that that we had seen either the true humans or like whoever was in charge of this project and maybe confronted them about it. Like, like, seriously, where is, where are they? Where is everybody? Are they, are they all shades? I, I, I figured that there were still a few that were in their original bodies, like, staying behind, overseeing this project. Or was it just Devola and Popola? And also kind of makes me wonder, so there's, there were supposed to be multiple Devolas and Popolas, right? Does that mean there were multiple versions of myself, of my replicant? Or is it just, like, them overseeing replicants for other humans probably that does that mean they all had their own little village too but yeah the the story was was really interesting i just under finally understanding what the gestalt project you know that they kept talking about near automata finally was 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 very satisfying <laughs> it was funny what you guys said i my plot guessing powers have gotten stronger i i guess the major uh twist in this game and near automata when i said it was like i wonder if the machines here are like gonna end up really being humans <laughs> and then and then of course in this game i don't i don't think i ever brought that up or even that possibility but but that ended up being true in this case essentially you guys also pointed out how uh so yoko taro had apparently mentioned that this game was inspired by 9-11 and that's also why uh near's birthday was supposed to be on 9-11 which i it seemed kind of odd to me but apparently it's to show that one's perspective on the story can change depending on which side of the field you're standing on, you know? Like, so, for example, the terrorists who blew up uh, the World Trade Center, you know, to in their, where they were from, they thought they were rebel as heroes. And while here, they were scorned as monsters. So, in, similarly, in this instance, with when uh, Nier was, you know, killing the monsters, initially seemed like you're doing the right thing, you know? You're killing these these evil beasts to save your daughter, and you're the, you're the hero, but then when you see things from the Shades' perspective while also getting that additional dialogue as you're fighting them that you didn't hear before, uh, you realize that, oh, you're not actually <laughs> really a hero at all. You're you're a monster, too, <laughs> going through and just killing all these like innocent people. You know, in, in the end, it's like you feel like you can't really blame one side or the other entirely. It's 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 not black and white. It's it's 
very gray, you know? There wasn't ever a, uh, an attempt from either side to try to understand each other's feelings or, you know, w or communicate. The fact that we, I, we didn't seem to be able to really talk to each other, I think, didn't help. You know, my guy made the assumption that these were just monsters that, you know, should just be killed. And to be fair, I mean, a number, uh, quite a few of them were pretty uh, murderous in their intent. Like that one that, like, ran ran into the village and like started murdering everybody that big massive one that we ended up locking into the uh under that building but it was cool I, it was interesting how yoko Taro took what like on the surface looks like it's just a regular everyday uh fantasy rpg and then turns on its head and you realize oh shit there's this other layer this just that's just the surface of it every once you understand what's going on underneath then it becomes a lot more complicated and you begin to question what you're doing uh as the player and it and I think that's always a really uh, great way of telling a story. I do think that things could have been executed again better here, um, especially in terms of replaying the game again and again to see these endings. That was just totally unnecessary, the, the third time at least. But overall, it, it definitely shows that Yoko Taro is uh, he's, he's got a real knack for, for writing uh, genuinely interesting stories with uh, very engaging characters. And... Uh, I look forward to seeing what he comes up with next. I'm hoping whatever it is, it's uh, got a bigger budget, <laughs> you know? I feel like uh, this game was very clearly on a low budget and it's so much, you know, recycling of areas. And, and I believe Nier Automata was a bit of the same way. But I, I'm thinking now that Automata was a much larger success than this game was... Um, Hopefully, whatever he does decide to make next will be a uh, a bigger hit, and he'll uh, have a bigger wallet to uh, make it even better. But yeah, I'm I'm really glad I played this game. I I feel like if I had played this game before Near Automata, I, I I feel like I would have been a lot more critical about it. Um, I think the fact that I finished it after Near Automata made me more willing to put aside the things that in this game that were not as good, and focus more on the things that uh, it did very well. Um, especially when I tried to make those connections between this game and Nier Automata and, you know, trying to understand the backstory that was that game. And I think by playing it backwards, in a sense, it, it, it kind of gave me an uh, interesting perspective on it. I, I feel like it helped to uh, make this a very unique Let's Play. So I, I, I'm honestly, I'm glad the way this turned out. I was, I was really happy with this. And I was really glad you guys seem to have really enjoyed this game as well. Maybe I'll read some of that uh, Grimoire Nier sometime in the future. I I, I don't know. May maybe. We'll, we'll see. There there's quite a few of them, but they're, they're pretty long. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this series. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not already. Become a Peaky Penguin. Avoid the SLP. Where the days are always sunny, and the vids are always funny. So yeah, for my uh, next game, I'm going to be playing something that's been uh, requested for quite a while now. And uh, something that I've uh, been meaning to get to for quite some time. I think a number of you probably have a good idea of what it is. It's been something that's been requested a bit, uh, quite a bit in in particular recently. I think you guys will be happy with the decision. So, But anyway, thank you all for joining me on this journey. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you all did too. And as always, guys, till next time... Stay classy.